Hi, this is Sam Collins of the American Acupuncture Council, and we're excited to give you another monthly uh, tidbit and program on the continuation of acupuncture, the promotion of acupuncture, where acupuncture is moving. And one of the areas that acupuncture has really uh, made some headways is into sports acupuncture. I'm sure many of you have seen lots of athletes and teams, sports teams, professional teams, and others that have used acupuncture. Well, we're pleased today to have Matt Callen, who started off as an athletic trainer, sports medicine doctor, and developed into a protocol of acupuncture. Matt is an experienced education uh, at Pacific College for athletic training and developing of a sports medicine, Chinese medicine program at the school. He has been doing this for over 25 years, which is quite a long time, and has created what's called a sports medicine acupuncture certification program. He has published a lot of articles on clinical acupuncture for tibial stress, uh, tibial stress syndrome, or so-called shin splints, as well as an article on sports-related muscle tension headaches in the Chinese medicine. He's also well-known for his work with professional athletes as well, because, of course, professional athletes' jobs depend on their body functioning well, and without that, they can't do it. And acupuncture has really found a good way to do that. He, of course, like I said, uh, was started off on the uh, sports medicine side on Western medicine from San Diego State in 1985, but received his master's degree in traditional oriental medicine for, from Pacific College and has now developed a protocol that's still taught at that school. And so we're very excited to have Matt Callison. And so, Matt, welcome to the program. Thank you, Sam. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, one of the things I want to ask is what is really, you know, so-called sports acupuncture? Give us a definition. I don't know. I really don't know to tell you the truth because sports acupuncture, it doesn't have, it doesn't have a definition. I mean, compared to looking at the Western sense, if you looked at sports medicine or orthopedic medicine, then there is a, a, there's a standard definition for that. But when it comes to sports acupuncture, there's no real standardized or educational form that is regulating sports acupuncture. So it's really left up to individual interpretation. Right. Well, again, I think, of course, I think most people would think, hey, it's, it's an athlete. And that could be an athlete like a professional athlete, but I would assume someone that does CrossFit or yoga may be seeking out this type of care as well. Oh, sure. I mean, actually, any, anybody who's, who's active and has an injury, by all means, and that also includes repetitive and overuse activities, you know, sitting behind a desk for too long or a, 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 con a construction worker, something of that nature. Yeah, well, I often think people will question and say, oh, I, I'm going to a sports If you sprain your ankle, whether it's on an athletic field or stepping off a curb, it's still an ankle sprain, and probably the best way to rehab it is to deal with it from that sports medicine standpoint. So where's what I do? I know you have some slides to show us, but I want to ask about really what you define it as and how your program works. And so if you want to just jump right into that and kind of give us a background, because I think there's a lot of acupuncturists interested in this and want to see where they might be able to enhance their practice with the use of it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for that. I really appreciate that. If we can look at sports acupuncture as being an umbrella term, um, because it really doesn't have a definition and it's left up to individual interpretation. Um, what I'm doing is what I'm presenting in the sports medicine acupuncture certification program is basically just my interpretation on how to be able to treat the human body and musculoskeletal injuries. Now, I'm not the only one under this umbrella of sports acupuncture. There's the pioneer, actually, the father of sports acupuncture, uh, Whitfield Reeves. He has a program and it's left up to his interpretation of what sports acupuncture is. And there's quite a few others that are, are leading in the fields of sports acupuncture. And, and the common goal with all of this is to treat the human being or treat that individual just as a patient, but also as their injury. So we're really trying to be able to combine the traditional Chinese medicine aspect of that. So sports acupuncture, that's a tough one because you have the word sports and you have the word acupuncture, there's a lot of free form to that. So if you'd like, I can go ahead and discuss what my interpretation is of, of treating the human body with the musculoskeletal injury. We can get started now if you'd like. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, and that's, I think it's important for those watching to remember that this is a relatively young field, but sports just means you're still treating a person. And one of the things I think that's kind of interesting, and I bet you probably can allude to it, there are things that potentially an acupuncturist can do that can enhance, enhance athletic performance to an extent without necessarily being injury related always. That certainly could be part of what's going on with, with an athlete for recovery. So um, yes. with that being said, um, let's take a look. I, I want to see your protocols and, and what you have and, and give, give our viewers some information. All right, let's go to the first slide then, please. So first medicine acupuncture is just a name. It's, it's, it's just a label of how I'm looking at the human body for musculoskeletal injuries. Sports medicine acupuncture was born from combining the philosophies 
and the assessment and the treatment of medicine with the philosophy and the assessment and the treatment of a sports medicine together over the last 25 years. And with that has evolved a list, a structure, a basis of what sports medicine and acupuncture is. And it starts off with traditional Chinese medicine, different diagnosis as its foundation. And so if we can start to look at the next slide, please. Part of the assessment of traditional Chinese medicine is tongue diagnosis. We also have pulse diagnosis. We have the five questions and the five pillars. But what's so important by using traditional Chinese medicine with sports injuries and, and using traditional Chinese medicine anyways is that is that it looks at the patient that has the injury. So if we could somehow, some way have these two people that you see on this slide, their tongues, person on the left, the person on the right, if we could be able to have the same mechanism of injury, the exact same musculoskeletal injury, is that their inflammatory response, their inflammatory process would most likely be different because of their internal environment. And this is where the beauty, beauty of traditional Chinese medicine is so powerful, is that the person on the left, we can see, would have heat in their system, and the person on the right would have qi and blood deficiency in their system. So their reaction to the actual injury is going to be different. It would be up to the TCM practitioner then to predicate their needle technique and their diagnosis of the musculoskeletal injury to be able to help that individual with the injury. Let's go to the next slide. Anatomy and palpation. Gosh, anatomy and palpation, and I'll, I'll go ahead and say it, it is the weak link of our education in the United States. And I believe that we need to have more anatomy and palpation taught in schools um, by having anatomy and palpation stronger with the acupuncturist actually makes better needlers for um, acupuncture points and safer needlers for acupuncture. Um, in the sports medicine acupuncture program, we have cadaver specimens, which you'll see a movie a little bit later in this presentation. Um, being able to teach different anatomies and uh, needle techniques and philosophies on, on acupuncture. So let's go to the next slide. Palpation is imperative, especially for this point here, the extra point at P-gone, which is just underneath the 12th rib, by safely needling P-gone, which is an excellent point for low back pain, uh, we need to know how to do it. We need to know what the underlying structures are. The wrong needle angle could go right into the kidney. So having anatomy and palpation in our education is very, very important for, for the future of traditional Chinese medicine here in the United States, in my opinion. Next slide, please. Manual muscle testing is another diagnostic that we use in sports medicine acupuncture. Um, let's go to the next slide. Let's say that a professional athlete or a weekend warrior or even somebody who sits behind the desk for a long period of time, they come to see you with anterior hip pain. Well, if it's a myofascial strain, there's four common or four primary muscles in the anterior hip that, that, be, that become strained. And each one of those muscles has a different channel, acupuncture channel. So therefore, if we use manual muscle testing to determine which muscle in the anterior hip was actually injured, and that would predicate what channel was injured. It would identify what channel was injured. Once we know what channel is injured, then the TCM practitioner can use certain points, local, adjacent, and distal, to be able to change the pain, change the range of motion, of that injury, release the myofascial plane, rid obstructions in the channels, so on and so forth. So manual muscle testing helps to identify where the injury is. It also helps to identify muscle imbalances. I've been using it for 25 years. It's a very successful tool. What else is in the assessment? Let's go to the next slide. Uh, orthopedic evaluations. Yes, this is where we put our detective hat on. We have to determine where is the fixed pain site or this person that has a paresthesia or radiculopathy, where is it coming from? Let's go to the next slide. For example, if we look at this orthopedic evaluation, we're looking for thoracic outlet syndrome. So why is this person hand swelling at night? Why are they getting a generalized aching? We need to determine where the fixed pain side is because every orthopedic evaluation provides a treatment, an acupuncture treatment protocol. Every orthopedic evaluation provides a specific acupuncture treatment protocol. Also, let's go to slide the next slide, please. 
you have an MRI, MRI image here, it's going to be very important for the acupuncturist to know also when to refer out. If the patient comes in with a full thickness tear of the supraspinatus, there are just some things that acupuncture and physical exercise are not going to treat. So we need to know what we can help and what we cannot help. We need to be able to refer. Now, we can still be on the team with the orthopedic surgeon or the physical therapist because of the effect that acupuncture has in balancing muscles and also helping with inflammation. So using a, a, a sports medicine acupuncturist um, on the team would be very quite useful for pre and post surgery for somebody who has a full thickness tear of the supraspinatus. Uh, next slide. Yes, postural assessment. So the last thing as far as, far as the assessment in sports medicine acupuncture is looking at the person's posture. By looking at the person's posture, you can understand why the injury occurred and also what channels are affected by looking at the person's posture. Let's go to the next slide, side by side of initial assessment after first treatment. Let's look at the image on the left, please. You can see that the person has an elevated right ilium. You can see side bends in their spine, okay? You can kind of guess what injury this person's coming in with. Well, sacroiliac joint pain on the right. He also had low back pain on the right. So the tissue on the right-hand side with that elevated ilium you can see is bunched up. So therefore, the urinary bladder, primary, and sinew channel has a stagnation of chi within that region. The TCM practitioner would then assess if it is excess or if it is deficient. Is it cold? Is it hot? And then predicate their treatment to be able to help that particular person with the stagnation within that region. So with the combination of acupuncture and also exercises based on his posture, this is the, the image on the right. You can see they were able to lower the ilium, the iliac crest. The same iliac joint pain felt better. His low back pain felt better. And his secondary complaint was uh, digestive disturbances. We can now see that his spine is better aligned, so therefore getting more chi to those organs. Uh, next slide. Um, since 2010, I've been doing some research, and these are five common postures that will usually have signs and symptoms based on certain organ disharmonies. Let me say that again. These are five basic postures that you go find that you will commonly have signs and symptoms of particular organ disharmonies. So I don't want to get too far into it because I could talk all day about this. I did a lecture at Pacific Symposium in 2011 called Posture and Pain. Perhaps you could be able to go through the archives and, and, read and get that information. But um, this is really quite useful when you do see somebody in the initial assessment that has one of these postures, you can predict, the TCM practitioner can predict what the pulse will be, what the tongue will be. And coming in with a musculoskeletal injury, well, we really need to be able to make sure that we treat the internal aspect so that because that will change the posture. Postural dysfunction is part of organ dysfunction, and organ dysfunction predicates postural alignment. So the two are go hand in hand. Okay. Great information. You're getting me really excited, guys. All right, so with sports medicine acupuncture, the assessment, we're wrapping up all of those assessment means. That gives you a diagnosis of the patient, who is that patient with the injury, but then also their injury. We've identified the exact fixed pain spot, the radicular pain or paresthesia. That we can develop then treatment principles from a sports medicine and a traditional Chinese medicine. You're going to develop a, a, a treatment plan and protocol. The treatment plan and protocol will be the following, acupuncture and moxibustion. Well, again, we could talk all day about acupuncture and moxibustion. Acupuncture itself is an art and a skill. It is a lifetime study. Understanding needle technique, understanding how to be able to propagate chi, understanding how to increase range of motion, decrease pain, is a lifelong journey to do that. Let's go to the next slide, please. Now, determining the channels, determining the channel directly affected by injury, it's fairly simple. 
Diagnosing the channels affected by injuries ripple effect requires knowledge of all the channel relationships within the energetic web of the Jing Luo and the Jing Jin systems. The Jing Luo being the primary channels and laterals, and the Jing Jin system systems being the musculoskeletal channels. So the, the TCM practitioner understanding that a fixed pain site, there's much more to treat than just that fixed localized pain. And also to understand that the channel are going to be affected because of that fixed pain site. Let's go to the next slide. So the TCM practitioner understanding the internal and the external relationships, the midday and midnight relationships and the six divisions, this energetic web and learning how to use proper needle technique to get the right amount of chi, the right enough stimulation to decrease pain, increase range of motion, balance the posture, balance the pulses, and create health. It's, it's a lifelong thing. Let's go to the next slide. In the program, we do quite a bit of target tissue needling is what I say. For example, here is somebody that has a supraspinatus partial tear, not a full tear, but a partial tear that we can help with. And here's a needle technique that we can use for a partial tear going in underneath the clavicle into the supraspinatus where the tear usually occurs. Now, if this person has pain around the large intestine 15 region, which is quite common with these type of injuries, we need to look at is this the only area of pain or could this shoulder actually be having pain because of something that's helping in the something that's occurring in the pelvis. So an elevated ilium on the opposite side could be leading to this person have an elevated shoulder on the side, which could have led to supraspinatus tendinopathy. Now we can overlie the channel systems with this. Is pain in the large intestine channel also associated with the kidney channel associated with that elevated ilium on the opposite side? Is this, that would be midday and midnight correspondence, or is the pain in this large intestine channel associated with the stomach channel, a yang ming, a sixth division relationship, because of the anterior tilt elevated ilium on the opposite side. So we can take pain away from here by treating the channel correspondences very successfully. Now this is straight traditional Chinese medicine. This has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. It's just being said in a little bit different way. All right, so next slide, moxibustion. Yes, we can go on about this all day. So moxibustion is, is imperative to use. It's, it's incredible, the research that's coming out with moxibustion and its anti-inflammatory properties. Um, ever since that I've been using direct moxa on tendon issues, my results have been pretty incredible. And I think other acupuncturists can say the same. Uh, the condition of tenosynovitis is a cold stagnation in the TCM world. So therefore, by using um, direct moxibustion on those areas of cold stagnation, it helps to release those mild fascial adhesions, which then acupuncture and also manual therapy work very well to also change that. So what I want to show you next is, is, a, is a cadaver slide. And this is a cadaver dissection that, that's occurring in the sports medicine acupuncture program. What we're doing is we're categorizing muscles and tissues within the Jing Jin, categorizing muscles and tissues within the sinew channels. Um, this is to help with developing treatment protocols. So let's go ahead and show the next one, please. So what you're going to be seeing here is going to be a needle in the biceps femoris, a hamstring, and then you'll see a needle in the peroneus longus muscle on the fibula, and then you'll see another needle at gallbladder 34. Many people will put the peroneus longus in the gallbladder channel. This video is showing you that it belongs in the urinary bladder channel. So the video is pulling on the biceps femoris and you can see the needle at the peroneus longus is moving, but not gallbladder 34, which is then showing that by pulling on the biceps femoris, the peroneus longus is moving and it's not associated with the gallbladder channel. So by doing that, 
by using the peroneus longus motor points and the biceps femor femoris motor point, that's a direct relationship with the sacroiliac joint myofascially. So therefore, using those points with sacroiliac joint pain and dysfunction are very useful clinically. Slide 19. All right, next with uh, PNF stretching, with proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation stretching, we're gonna be using that. Now we're putting our sports medicine hat on. So we're using proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitative stretching for uh, muscles that are found in the postural assessment that are locked short. So when muscles are locked short, we're doing a reducing needle technique on the localized muscle. We're mashing it with the channel and then we can use the PNF stretching to be able to help elongate those tissues within that locked short muscle. For example, next slide, you'll see a PNF stretch of a triceps. So we're incorporating PNF stretching to help to reduce excess within these sinew channels. All right, next in the treatment would be soft tissue and joint mobilizations. Let's go to the next slide. So myofascial therapy, joint mobilizations, and we also teach some kinesio taping uh, within the sports medicine acupuncture program. Um, the myofascial therapy and the joint mobilizations are based on structural integration and also to na and the kinesio taping is, is based on the, the original uh, kinesio taping, Kenzo Kasi's work. Let's go to the next slide. Chinese herbal medicine, absolutely. Uh, Chinese herbal medicine, internal Chinese medicine is gonna be changing the person's biochemistry, imperative to use for inflammation, imperative to use for any kind of zong fu problem that are contributing to the musculoskeletal injury, absolutely. Um, external poultices, next slide. External poultices are wonderful to use with, with uh, hot and cold conditions that most traditional Chinese practitioners use. Um, I've got my favorites. There's leaders in the field that are very good at this. Um, for example, Tom Bizio, his work with Chinese herbal medicine and sport medicine is uh, pretty extraordinary. He's a person to look at in the field. He's somebody who's really under the sports acupuncture umbrella that is helping our field quite a bit. Uh, let's go to the next slide. And then we have therapeutic exercise. All right, so it's not just therapeutic exercise. It is therapeutic exercise and acupuncture combined. This picture of this is that the patient comes in, you're doing your TCM diagnostic assessment, you're doing your manual muscle testing, your orthic evaluation, your postural assessment, you're developing an idea of what is happening with this particular person, the patient and their injury. You lay it on the table, you apply your acupuncture, you can do PNF stretching, you can do your soft tissue mobilizations, Chinese herbal medicine. But at, at the very end of the treatment, when this person is, is proprioceptively aware because of the acupuncture, now's the time to prescribe two or three therapeutic exercises that will help to balance the person's postural alignment or the postural imbalances that cause the musculoskeletal injury. Now, let's go to the next slide. Let's, for example, somebody comes in to see you with pain around small intestine 10. When it was pain around small intestine 10, many times it can be a strain of the infraspinatus myofascial tissues. That would be diagnosed with orthopedic exam and also manual muscle testing. So if, let's say we give an exercise to mildly start to strengthen that muscle that's been strained, and you see this woman that is putting her hand against the wall, she's doing an isometric exercise, exercise of external rotation. Now this is after the acupuncture treatment, she's doing it. But let's say that she's got some mild pain or discomfort from that. We can put interdermal needles into particular points in order to decrease that pain so the person can successfully per, uh, per, so the person can successfully perform the therapeutic exercise. So what I'm going to show you this next video is going to be uh, the it's a it's in the class of the sports medicine acupuncture program. It's called um, uh, postural assessment and corrective exercise. And what we're doing is, is showing the the group the exercises, how to perform the exercises. But if the person is having difficulty or any kind of, of mild pain with the exercise, how to apply uh, interdermal needles into specific acupuncture points that will help to decrease the pain and allow that person to do the exercise. 
So let's go ahead and play that now. All right, so video is just starting. So again, what you're gonna see is if this is in a classroom in the Postural Assessment Corrective Exercise class, and this person is having a very difficult time doing an exercise called elbow flies. It's a scapular stabilization exercise, and she's having a hard time proprioceptively understanding how to be able to do that. Like she just, she can't function that way. So she's describing that actually here right now when she's trying to bring her elbows together. And she's, her body just stops. She's not able to actually do that. So she's having to compensate in different ways to be able to try to get those elbows up. Yeah, you can see that she's trying to compensate there. So what we're doing now is to apply the um, intradermal needles to particular extraordinary vessel mastering confluent points, trying to be able to change the proprioception and have this person then perform the exercise. So you can see what I'm doing there is, is putting in the needles. We're also putting the needles on both sides. We're treating bilateral here. Interdermal needles, these are uh, quite small interdermal needles. You can use them while performing the exercises. The, the needles are in place. And then we ask her to perform the exercise again. And there she has the ability to do that. Now this occurs day in, day out, clinically. Yeah. Let's go to the next slide. Here's an individual, let me just get a little case study here. There's, here's an individual that came to see me when I was in New Zealand, practicing New Zealand, living in New Zealand, and um, he wanted to start getting in shape and he was training for a half marathon. And what happened is, is his chief complaint was exercise-induced asthma, numbness and aching in the right hand that's worse, worse at night, and low back pain and digestive disturbances. Well, we got him off of meat. We got him, we, we, we decreased his dairy by 50%. That helped a lot with exercise-induced asthma, helped a lot with digestive disturbances. The numbness and aching in the right hand was a thoracic outlet syndrome. Now, his TCM diagnosis Tongue was pale white coat, a slippery pulse, and it's weak in the lung and the kidney positions. The diagnosis was lung chi insufficiency, spleen chi deficiency with damp and kidney chi shu. So by treating him and giving him exercises as he's continued to train with the half marathon, uh, six weeks later, we go to the next slide now. You can see six weeks later is that he was a different person. Now this is treating him um, with the, the, the same, look at with sports, treating it with the sports medicine acupuncture that we discussed here in the list. And so you can be able to see before the initial treatment, then also after treatment six weeks later. So that in a nutshell is what we're doing. And this is my interpretation. And this is how I understand how to be able to treat the human body. And again, it's just one slice of the pie under the umbrella of sports acupuncture. <laughs> Well, that, Matt, that is pretty exciting. A couple of things I, I picked up on is one, from a sports medicine standpoint, it's really maintaining the philosophy of acupuncture. It's just kind of understanding it in a more potentially Western way or just a way that an athlete or someone that functionally would understand. Because it looks like everything you mentioned is mostly just balance. It is. It's balancing the system. Exactly. And, and whether you're injured for many different ways, that can be the case. Something else I picked up on is I noticed, you know, obviously the acupuncture, but one of the things you pointed out, and I'll just mention this so those are aware of the American College of Occupational Environmental Medicine has published a lot of things. And one of them was, and is interesting when you did the, the dermal needles, when she was able to do that exercise well, they have found that exercise in for neck exercise specifically are more effective with needling than without. And so oh, I think that was yeah. a good illustration to me to see that actually happen mm -hmm. uh, as something that uh, I think many times that when a patient is receiving care like this, the best way for them to understand is that that is an immediate result. It is immediate result. And it's important to, to actually try to combine as many medicines as possible, I think. That's why I think it's really important to have an acupuncturist in all medical clinics, chiropractor in medical clinics, physical therapy. And if everybody could triage the patient to see what's going to end up being best for that patient, that would be great. And I start, you start to see these multidisciplinary clinics all over the place now. Yeah, well, certainly every I've, I've taught seminars across the U.S. and I have several doctors that treat many professional teams, as you noted. 
Well, Matt, one of the things I, I think, obviously, with your background from San Diego State and sports medicine and working in the athletic field, what has really been your knowledge and inspiration to continue to create and, and do these types of protocols for sports medicine and acupuncture? I think by having passion. I think I having a lot of passion and getting really excited about seeing what acupuncture can do to the musculoskeletal system um, quickly, so quickly by manual muscle testing, a muscle gets much stronger after needling it or a distal needling, how you can change range of motion so quickly. It's, it's, it's very exciting. So um, pretty much all I do, Sam, is study, research, and practice. I'm a pretty boring guy. I can't fix my car. I know nothing about my car, but as far as treating the musculoskeletal system, I'm, I think I'm pretty good at that. Well, my belief is stick with your strong points, let others work on the weak. Now, one of the things, um, obviously you've been around this for many years. How have you seen this progress over time and where do you see it moving to the future? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, where it has progressed actually is positive and negative. Um, where it's progressed is that Western medicine is really seeing the efficacy of what acupuncture can do and how it can fit into um, into the Western scheme. The, the, the cons of that is that it's now becoming watered down a little bit where acupuncture is just being used itself and not traditional Chinese medicine. Is, is that many practitioners will just go ahead and treat the injury itself or put a couple of needles of, into people without any real process, without looking at um, the channel systems, without observing traditional Chinese medicine. Um, so um, I, think, I think where it's evolving is twofold. One way is to be very good because of the popularity of it, and another is that it's becoming really segmented. It's interesting you state it that way, too, because obviously you're well aware and everyone watching is well aware of the whole called dry, so-called dry needling. And of course, getting away from the traditional part, if you just insert a needle to a trigger point, I assume it may reduce. But the reason for the trigger isn't the trigger point. And so if you're not treating it from the traditional standpoint with the channels and all the things that are connected, it's just simply not working. And hence why someone has to see a traditional practitioner to really, I think, get that full uh, platform to understand it from that, that bigger picture, as you showed all those ones on the different channels that you have to hit, it's not just a matter of just throwing a needle in there. That's true, but acupuncture is pretty amazing. I mean, a monkey get results with acupuncture. When you put a needle into a muscle in different areas, that muscle, there is going to be a physiological effect with that. Um, and you're right. So just by doing a limited amount of acupuncture into a muscle, it can make an effect. Um, but because the human body is much more than just that muscle for long lasting results, there may need to be more included into that. Right, exactly. And I think that's where we're, we're hopefully moving, even from the sports medicine and others, but obviously the Joint Commission and others kind of pushing the, the methods of acupuncture to deal with, you know, the pain management and so forth. So, well, this is fantastic. I, I do want to ask, though, how someone to, to get to program, would they just go, is there a website? Is there a place they can, can go online or a place to call just to get some information about it? Oh, sure. Uh, sportsmedicineacupuncture.com. Thanks for asking that, Sam. I really appreciate it. Appreciate that. Sportsmedicineacupuncture.com. But again, um, the way that this program is run is not the only way of treating the human body. It is a very specific way of educating the acupuncturists. There's lots of different programs that are out there. So somebody that was really interested in going back to school and, and trying to be able to learn sports medicine acupuncture or sports acupuncture is to do a lot of due diligence of what each program has to offer. And, and then from there, make an educated decision of what's going to end up being best for that particular individual. Because the common goal is really for us to be able to help our patients. Well, ultimately, that's true. And of course, I think you're just being a little bit humble, Matt, which is fine. I get that. But at the same token, um, I think for anyone interested, it's certainly a program worth looking into and kind of just enhancing your skills. That's a continuation of growth, continuation of the profession. And I think there's a big market out there. I mean, I, if you think of the number of people who take yoga classes, CrossFit, go to the gym, these are people who are looking to enhance their body's function, not just treat pain only but make themselves feel better. To, as I think we, I talked to you a little bit before the program, you mentioned that as far as your practice, you treat only cash. You're not even dealing with insurance, correct? That's true. I, I stopped taking insurance a while ago and I'm just a cash, I just take cash. That's true. Um, you know, maybe some of the best things, somebody who was interested in the sports medicine acupuncture is to go ahead and go to the website and look at the testimonials and hear, actually hear from somebody else, hear from one of the students. 
because we have a number of our graduates now working with professional sports teams, working with sports chiropractors, working with uh, sports physical therapists, because they are getting results and they're able to assess and treat, discuss it from a traditional Chinese medicine point and then also sports medicine uh, uh, point as well. So um, I, think, I think that would be useful to actually look at the testimonials. Oh, no, absolutely. I, I agree with you. And I think it's just it's a way that I want to make sure that those watching the program can look and say, hey, this may be something they've been interested in. And this is an avenue and then creating a network of people who've done it so you can kind of help themselves by seeing what others have done. So I can't thank you. enough. This has been uh, very educational. I think those videos were um, quite enticing in the sense of what, what you can see. And I would tell everyone, take a moment to look because whether a patient's been hurt, you know, just at home or the, on the sports field, it's still a person, it's still a body, and there has to be a function, and that's the balance. And it's what I love about acupuncture, it's balance. Thank you, Sam, I really appreciate the time. Yeah, great, well, thanks everyone for being with us. Matt, I can't thank you enough. And for all of those coming up, we will be having our seminars on coding, billing, documentation, continuing education. So take a look at our site, the American Acupuncture Council, it's AACinfo, I-N-F-O, network.com, and look forward to seeing you next month.